Hey, hey, some more love bugs. You have now tuned in to my If Loving You Is Wrong recap slash review slash chit chat. We ain't gonna talk too much though. Um, <clears throat> so this episode started off really well. Very good way to start it off with a bang. And I'm happy that certain things got revealed because I'm like, oh, they dragged it out so much in the in the first episode, first season, I should say. <clears throat> Excuse me. So Marcy and Randall, they were having an argument. And of course, that's about what we saw in the last episode, which was where she found out about Peppa, a.k.a. Alex. She saw the email, saw the text messages, and she knows who Peppa is. So Esperanza, she says, well, she gets called because she's like dispatched for 911. This nosy neighbor called the police. So she calls, uh, who did she call? She called Kelly to kind of find out if she heard anything or knew about anything. And Kelly's just like, no. So she's like, you know what? I'm going to call Brad so he can knock on the door. And Kelly's like, I can do it. He's like, she's like, nah, I'm going to let a guy do it. Don't start doing that whole women's rights and women power type of thing. Let's, I want him to do it. <clears throat> and Kelly's just like, well, you know, you did say the police are on their way, so let's just wait for them. And she's like, no, no, I want, I would like him to go now, so I'm going to call him. So she calls Brad, and Brad tells, once he talks to her, he tells um, Alex that there's some domestic disturbance being reported at Randall and Marcy's, and he's going to go and check it out. And she's just like, oh, you know, you know, she, she's starting to get worried, like, oh, my God, what could this be about? He goes, knocks on the door, no one answers. But luckily, his boy, the police officer, Ed, and, um, what is it, Lucius is the other guy's name? I can't remember, but I think that's his name. Natalie's husband, or boyfriend, whatever. <clears throat> he goes with him, and they knock on the door, and when Marcy, well, not even Marcy, it was Randall that opened, he tried to pretend like everything was okay. So they come in, and Marcy's, like, just sitting down crying. And they took him outside, and Ed stays with him, and Ed is just like, I mean, Ed stays with Marcy, and he's like, is everything okay? Is he putting his hands on you? And I'm like, Ed, out of all people, you the one that's going to be asking her, like, what do you be doing to Esperanza? You be trying to intimidate her? You be trying to go hard on her? Did he, don't he even be pushing her up sometimes and, and threatening her? And he want to come talking about if he did Come on. That's like calling the freaking... The, the what, the pot calling the kettle black or something like that. <laughs> I always try to do this damn analogy and it'll never come out right. But y'all know what I'm talking about. Like, how you gonna be saying that if you know what you're doing? Come on. So when they go to, um, when he's talking to her, she's like, she wants him to help her so she can leave because he's not allowing her to leave. She did say that she hit him, and he's like, well, you know, he could press charges if he wants, and she's like, how's he gonna press charges when he's the one that's taking everything from me? He's the one that's screwing the bee next door. And the first thought that comes to his mind when he thinks about the bee next door is, hmm, he must be screwing the black woman. Because, you know, the black woman is always the one to get blamed first, and plus, he's black, so why not screw another black woman? It would only make a little bit of sense. Right? She doesn't have a man, so yeah, makes makes pretty good sense for him to be doing that. As Marcy goes into the car, she looks at Alex as though if looks could kill, she would have thrown 20 daggers into her face and murdered her right in front of everyone. That's the way, she, that's the kind of stare that she gave her like that. You know, one of those real quick. And Alex was like, she was so freaking ashamed, but didn't want to, like, really show it or anything like that. But Marcy left quietly. And I'm like, Marcy, just say it, girl. Why are you not saying nothing? Tell us what's going on. Everybody looking around, but they don't really know what's going on. Oh. And so, <laughs> Brad, he ended up telling, um, well, first... Ed comes out and talks to Brad and tells him what's, what he assumes is going on. He's like, yo, she said that he's sleeping with the bee next door. So, you know, he's pretty much sleeping with Kelly. And he's like, wow, like, I can't believe it. You know, he's in a little bit of shock. 
Esperanza, she's in a little bit of shock when she finds out later on when he finally reveals it to her as well. And Natalie, she was just like, she was going hard on her when they when they actually was talking about it like later on. And um, Brad, he tells Alex like, yo, Randall is sleeping with Kelly. And she's like, how do you know that? Like, what? Who told you this? And he was just like, well, they said that he's sleeping with the bee next door. So it's Kelly. And she's like, wow, that's crazy. Like, I'm like, girl, this is the perfect time to kind of try to reveal something. But, you know, when you're in a lie, you want to get, you want to keep it until the very end, until there's no way possible for you to hold on to that lie anymore. When it's something like that. You you don't want to reveal nothing. You're like maybe there's an is you have you holding on to that little bit of hope that it is not gonna go out that your cat is gonna stay in that bag even if he scratches. You know he's trying, meow, he's trying to get out of the bag, but he is not coming out. You're hoping <laughs> you are. So Kelly, she's getting all ready to to go to Brad's surprise party. And the girls come in, that was Natalie and Alex, and they're both, like, disgusted with her. So they're like, you know, we have to confront her, talk to her, and see why she would do something like this. Especially when whatever just ha Travis just did what he did to her not too long ago when he cheated on her. So they're, like, scolding her, and she's just like, wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> this is not about me. She was like, who told you this? Did Alex tell you this? Really? They're like, no, Alex didn't say this, but... They said the bee next door. And she's like, first of all, I'm not a bee. And second of all, I don't live next door. Think about it. So then they think about it and they're like, wow, that is crazy. They're supposed to all be best friends. This is ridiculous. And so now they're having a surprise party for Brad. Everybody's there. She's looking all Miss, Miss freaking... Alex is looking all cute in her little dress. And I'm like, where her belly at? Ain't she supposed to have a little bit of something? She's still looking pretty flawless. Well, maybe not flawless, but she's still looking pretty darn thin to me. It's been a while. You know, where's your belly at? <laughs> so they're having the party and everything. Everybody's giving him gifts. He's opening them. And she goes upstairs to, I guess, go throw up or whatever and this dude has the audacity. Well, even before that, he gave her a hug. And he has the audacity to, like, grab her butt while everybody's around. And then she goes upstairs. He goes after her. And when she's going back downstairs, he grabs her into one of the rooms. And he's talking to her and trying to kiss her up. And I'm like, yo, that is disrespectful to the max. What are you doing, bro? Seriously? And Natalie sees and she kind of talks to him. Like, you need to get yourself in check. Like, you need to stop. Like, you're one of those kind of dudes that... Running after a white woman. What is it that you're doing? And they just have their little words or whatever. And she tells her to really be careful because she's going to end up getting herself caught and not put out there. And she's just like, I can't tell him. I have to keep this secret. When they go back downstairs... Here comes a drunken Marcy. She and she she one of the classy drunks, honey. Yes, you know why I say that because she was walking around and I did this before. I, I actually walk around my little pimp glass everywhere I go. Yes, because I don't know if anybody's gonna always have a little glass for me, and I don't be wanting to use them little red cups and stuff like that. So I have my own glass, and I will wash my own glass when I'm done and take it back home. So she had her little glass, and she had her little present in the other hand. She was drinking. She's like, Brad, happy birthday. I brought you a gift. You need to open it right now in front of everybody. Please just open it right now. Then this dude, Randall, come and try to grab her up. She's like, Brad, make sure you open it right now. And then she's like, get off of me, get off. Like she's trying to fight him, but he's like so strong because you see the muscles, right? You know, them same muscles that Alex be rubbing up on takes her outside and everyone's kind of like gathered around outside trying to talk to her and the funny thing that ed noticed which is ed ed the creep he know ed the phony ed the fake 
And he notices that the person, the only person that was able to console her at that moment was Kelly. And he's like, wait, that doesn't make any sense. Why would she let Kelly talk to her? Because Kelly's like, come on, come on. And, you know, hugging her and taking her over to the side. She's like, why would she let Kelly take her? This doesn't make any sense if she's the one who's sleeping on her. And he talks to Lucia. like, yo, what did she say? I mean, he was like, she said he F the B next door. And then he was like, hold on. He went, boom! <laughs> Gave him like two shots because you know at the end of the day, like he's known Brad forever. And Brad is like his really close friend. And they are ride or dies. And he's always had his issues with Randall because Randall, I guess, was kind of like the new guy. He didn't really know him like that. And he was always telling him to watch it. But, you know, coming from him, especially who Ed is, it just kind of seemed like he was a hater or whatever and didn't want him to mess up his friendship with Brad but it wasn't the case he kind of foresaw something he knew that something he had foreseen this he knew that something was not right with this dude so yeah he gives him the beating and I think it was Lucius that kind of came and and took him off like okay nah chill with all that so um when that happens Brad, he's inside. Well, he, he goes back inside because he's like, yo, something is not right here. And she's opening. I mean, um, what's her name? She has the gift behind her. Uh, Alex, she has the gift and she's trying to hide it. She's like, no, don't do it. Don't open it. Not right now. Don't open it. And he's like, give it to me. And she's like, no, 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 please don't. Don't open it. He's like, pass it to me now. Something is not right here. Give it to me. So when she finally hands it to him and he opens it up, it's all of the text messages and the emails them that they was doing back and forth. And it just reveals everything. It probably has her phone number, which he probably knows by heart. And it probably says her name is Peppa. And then it has the emails. He most likely knows her email address. So yeah, the jig was pretty much up after that. And he's just, he looks at her with a, a look of disgust. And this was like super... It was super retarded, super... It was a disgrace because... And embarrassing because now you can't even pretend. Like, all your dirty laundry is aired out in front of the world. Well, in front of all your neighbors, friends, family, whoever. All the people that she decided to invite. Although he did initially say he didn't want any party. If she would have just listened, she probably could have saved herself a lot of embarrassment. Because Marcy probably wouldn't came, have come down. But she knew it was going to be a big event and this would be the best way to get her. Plain and simple and easy. So, yeah, this, I don't know. We're going to see what where they take it from here. But things are about probably about to get crazy. Um, and following that, Brad goes outside and he turns into a gangster now because he goes and he punches up freaking Randall as though the cops wasn't even standing there. Like, he just started, boom, boom, went in his car and he was out. Like cops what cops there ain't no cops around here they can't tell me nothing nada <laughs> all right guys so let me know what you thought about this episode down below i'm oh alex what is wrong you should just told girl you know messed up and now he's probably gonna start questioning the the baby and the paternity of the baby and all this and asking for timelines it's about to get real messy real quick all right, guys, thanks for watching. Be sure to stay fabulous, live free, and soar limitless. I will see you in the next one. <laughs> Laters.